In the last video, we set up our full stack. And so in this one, I'm going to build out some of the initial styling of it, uh, show how to customize Tailwind CSS, and extract out components. Let's get started. So here's where we left off last time. Um, let's go ahead and just add a little bit of styling to the body here. We'll set up a font family and maybe just give it a background color. Uh, let's make it a little bit lighter. All right, that's looking good. Let's go over to our page and let's go ahead and just add an H1 to the top here. And we'll use some of the Tailwind utilities to get it centered and maybe give it a little bit of um, tracking. Let's go ahead and make the text uh, kind of fade in. Make it not so prominent. And let's give it a little bit of margin. That looks good. Now we go into our Elm app and kind of build out our default look that we want for the to-dos. Go ahead and remove this H1. Let's wrap the whole thing in a div. I want that div in the middle of the screen, so let's go ahead and give it um, auto margins. And then let's set a max width. And then just make the whole thing f full width. Do a little bit of padding. That should be good. So in, uh, inside here, we're going to have an input that will add our to-dos. And then we'll have a list of to-dos. Let's go ahead and create that input. So input will need a type. Um, we'll use this underscore here because type is um, a keyword for Elm. Go ahead and use appearance none on the input. That gets rid of all of the default styling for inputs. Give it a little drop shadow and add a border around it and a little bit of padding. Let's see how that looks. Alright, not bad. Um, let's go ahead and give it the full width of our container. Make the shadow a little bit bigger, make it pop off the page a bit. Now I kind of want a little indicator that you're over the input. So let's go ahead and add some hover styling. And we'll just change the border to green. There we go. Make sure this looks like input. Let's also give it a placeholder. What do you want to do? Now that we have our input, let's go ahead and create our unordered list of to-do items. We're not going to want bullets on the side, so let's go ahead and reset the list. And let's create our to-do item. We'll go ahead and give it some text. Let's just say, what do we want? Uh, we're going to need to move the lawn. 
All right, let's give it a little bit of space in between our input. So go ahead and add a bottom margin here. That looks a lot better. Let's go ahead and style our to-do items. Let's give them a background of white so they match our input. Give them a little bit of padding as well. Okay. Now let's connect the two together. We'll give them the same size shadow as we have on our input. There, now those look connected. Let's also increase the size of the text of our to-dos. That's going to give some feedback to the user and show them when we're hovering. We'll need to first make sure we have an actual border before we change the color of it. Let's just do the border on the left though. Go to size of 4. Alright, that looks cool. Now we're going to need some kind of element to uh, delete to-dos. So let's go ahead and, and put a span on the left and we'll make a little X that we can click on to delete to-dos. Let's make it a dark red. And let's just we'll add a little X. All right, then we're going to want to move that X to the right side. Let's go ahead and give its position absolute. And we'll pin it to the right. But for that to work, we're going to need to um, have its parent be relative. There we go. Let's give that a little bit of margin to get away from the right side. So do margin right. There, that looks a lot better. Let's make it stand out a little bit. Let's give it a border and have a border of two. And then let's make the border the same color as the text. It's going to make this um, fully rounded. Now it's just rounding on the text, so let's give it a width and a height of a square. That way we can get a perfect circle. There, now we have a perfect circle, but we need to center that X in the middle of it. Let's go ahead and use uh, Flexbox to do this. So we'll create this as a flex. Uh, let's go ahead and center the items and justify them center as well and get it top and bottom centered. All right, everything's centered now, um, but we're going to want to make sure that we pin this to the top. It's looking a lot better. Let's make this stand out a bit. Get a little top margin and get it there. And let's also add a shadow to kind of make this pop a bit. There we go, that looks good. Now we probably don't want our X always visible. Um, so let's only make it visible when we hover over the um, whole Li. To do that, we'll make it invisible. And then we're going to use um, something Tailwind provides called a group hover. So we'll go ahead and say the group is the list element. And then we'll say when the group is hovered, 
let's change the class to visible. Now you can see that doesn't work now because Tailwind is not giving us those utilities yet. So let's go ahead and configure Tailwind to give us those. So this is where you make all your changes in Tailwind. Um, all the colors are declared in here, all the different styles, and this gets compiled out to give you your CSS. So there's all, all the colors that they give by default. And it's a good idea in production to go through this file and remove stuff um, that you're not using or add the things that you want um, just to decrease the size of your compiled CSS. So let's just go ahead and go down to visibility and we can add the group hover. So it's got all the responsive stuff, um, but it doesn't have group hover. So let's add that and compile it. So now visibility has the group hover. Awesome. So I think the styling looks pretty decent for our first pass. Um, but we're going to want to make a bunch of these to do items and that's quite messy looking in here in our markup. So let's go ahead and extract out the uh, classes. Let's get rid of that gray thing on the left by making our border. White. There we go. Then on hover it changes to blue. Let's go over to our app CSS file. And Tailwind does not use important, so it's important that you declare your extracted styles um, before you import all the utilities. So they give you a hook called apply. And we can use apply to grab all those different styles um, that we want from Tailwind. Let's go ahead and grab everything out of our list item. And then everything needs um, to know that it's a class. So we'll just add a dot in front of all the different utilities. Now for hover, they don't have um, an ability. So we'll have to declare a second um, to do with hover and apply what we want in that one. Group is also a special thing. We'll go ahead and build that ourselves. So on hover, we're going to want to apply the blue border. Now we can just delete it out of the to-do class. All right, now that we have our styling extracted, let's go ahead and use that. Nice. So we have the to-do styled. Uh, we still need to take care of the span and we need to write that group hover ourselves. So we just do the exact same thing for span. Go ahead and delete the group hover. So we'll have to write that ourselves. Now these applies can get really long. Um, so you can definitely break them up and call it twice. But when you do that, make sure you add a semicolon at the end. All right, we still don't have the span showing up on hover. So let's go ahead and create that. So go ahead and say when the to-do list item is hovered, that we want to apply visible to the span. Let's also give us a, um, a pointer so it shows that it's a clickable item. All right. 
can see that our group hover is now working. Let's go ahead and remove that class. And let's go ahead and uh, duplicate this to do a few times. And see how it looks overall with several of them in there. There we go. Looks good. Let's add a little bit of separation between the different to dos. Let's go back to our to do class. Let's just give it a bottom margin of one. There we go. It kind of separates them a bit. That looks better. So there we go. We got our first pass at styling. Um, we can go ahead and remove this group hover as well from Tailwind as we wrote it ourselves. So we don't need that compiled out right now. In the next episode, we'll go ahead and start working on the Elm and make this actually um, backed by a model and interactive.